Hey guys, welcome back to Bronze's Math Club. Today's topic is multiplying and dividing decimals. In our previous video, we talked about adding and subtracting decimals. Well, this is pretty much the same thing, except you're using reverse operations, which are multiplication and division. So let's get started. First, we're going to be doing how to multiply decimals, okay? So let's say we have the two decimal numbers, 5.4 times 3.4. Point six, okay? So we have our problem right there, which is 5.4 times 3.6. And in order to multiply this, just keep this in mind. For now, forget all about the decimal point. So just say that we don't have 5.4 and point 36, 3 point, I'm sorry, 3.6. We just have 54 times 36. So right now, we're just going to go ahead and forget about the decimal points. And we're going to come back to the decimal points once we have our product. So since this is just simple multiplication, we're going to go ahead and multiply 54 times 36. Now we know that whenever we're multiplying, we start from right to left, and we have to go from top and bottom. So first we have 6 times 4. 6 times 4, we all know, is 24. So what we're going to do is we're going to put the 4 over here, which is in the 1's place, and carry the 2 up onto the 54, which is the 5, which is also in the 10's place. So it's going to go on top of the 5. And now we have 6 times 5, which is 30 plus that 2 equals 32. Now put a 0 in order to move on to the tens place. 3 times 4 is 12. Carry the 1 over the 5. 3 times 5 is 15, plus that 1 is 16. And now add the two products. 4 plus 0 is 4. 2 plus 2 is 4. 3 plus 6 is 9. And then bring down the 1. And now we have our product of 1,944. Now what you're going to do is go ahead and bring this product over here to the original problem, which was 5.4 times 3.6, and write 1,944. And now what you have to do in order to find your um, final product is count the number of digits after the decimal points in each of these numbers. So first we have 5.4, and as you can see, after a decimal point, there is only one digit. And then after, for, number, the, for the number 3.6, there's also one digit after the decimal point. So now 1 plus 1 equals two digits in total, right? So what you're going to do is you're going to take the decimal point. Now, 1,944 is a whole number. And remember, in whole numbers, the decimal point isn't really visible, but it's actually in the end of it, okay? So what you're going to do is you're going to take that decimal point and now move it two places, since there are two digits after the decimal points in our numbers, two digits from right to left. Now, why are you moving it right to left? Well, because when you multiplied it, we had removed our decimal points. So what we had actually done was make our numbers whole numbers by moving them from left to right. Now that we have a product, we need to make our, we have to do the opposite step. So first we had moved them from left to right to make them into whole numbers. Now we have to move them from right to left to make them back into decimal number, okay? So right to left, two places would be one, two, and we get our final product of 19.44, which means 5.4 multiplied by 3.6 equals 19.44. So that's that for multiplying decimals. Now let's go ahead and do a problem which has dividing decimals, okay? So let's go ahead and take two decimal numbers. So I'm going to go ahead and say 3.6 divided by 1. Point four. Okay, so these, these are my two numbers. Now remember this rule always in dividing decimals. Now you need to make your divisor, which is the number that you're dividing by, which is outside. So remember, this is your divisor. The number inside the box is your dividend. And your answer that you will get will become your quotient. Right now, we don't really have a quotient because we have to first do that step of converting the divisor into a whole number. And how you do that is by moving the decimal point as many places as you need to in order to make the 1.4 into a whole number. Now, as you can see, if we move the decimal point, in order to make it a whole number, we need to go from left to right. So if we move it one place from left to right, it now becomes a 14, which is a whole number. So now we have 14 is a whole number, so now we have 3.6 divided by 14. But always remember this rule, that whatever you do to the divisor, you need to do to the dividend as well. So if you moved the decimal point 
an inner divisor from left to right once, then you have to do the same thing for the 3.6 and move the decimal point left to right once to make this a 36. So now you have 36 divided by 14. So now you can go ahead, I'm just going to go ahead and rewrite this over here. So our original problem, which was 3.6 divided by 1.4, has now become 36 divided by 14. Okay, so now what you're going to do is go ahead and do simple division. So can 3 go into 14? No. Can 36 go into 14? Maybe. So let's go ahead and do the times table for 14 to find out how many times we have to multiply 14 to get into 36. Okay, so we know that 14 times 1 is 14. 14 times 2 is 28. 14 times 3 is 42. Now 42 is greater than 36, so we cannot do 14 times 3. So we're going to have to do 14 times 2, which is 28. So 14 times 2 is 28, so 36 minus 28. So we can also subtract 8 from 6, so we're going to have to borrow 1 from that 3 to make this a 16, and 3 now becomes a 2. 16 minus 8 equals 8, and 2 minus 2 is 0, and now we're left with a remainder of 8. So we, what we're going to have to do is put a decimal point where we have our quotient, which is 2, and add a 0 to the 8 to make this an 80, and now we can keep on going. So now we have to come up with a number to find out how many times 14 can go in 80. So now let's keep on going in our times table. So 14 times 4 is uh, 56. 14 times... 5 is 70, 14 times 6 equals 84. Now 84 is greater than 80, so we're going to have to go ahead and do 14 times 5, which is 70. So 14 times 5 is 70, subtract it, and we, are remain we have a remainder of 10. We cannot do 10 divided by 14, so we're going to have to add another 0 over here, and now we have 100. So how many times can 14 go into 100? Let's keep on going in our times table. So 14 times 7 equals 98. So this is pretty much really close because if we were to do 14 times 8, that would give us 112, and 112 is greater than 100. So we're going to have to do 14 times 7, which is 98, and get a remainder of 2. Now remember this, sometimes if you're dividing decimals, it does happen in some situations that your numbers will keep on going. So the best option that you have is to stop at two decimal places. So as you can see in our quotient, now we now have 2.57, which is two decimal places after we counted from the decimal point. So we can go ahead and stop here. So our answer is about 2.57. So that means 3.6 divided by 1.4 equals 2.57. So that's that for multiplying and dividing decimals. Now you can always visit our blog at www.romancesmathclub.com for extra practice problems on this topic and further coming up topics. And we'll see you guys next time. Bye!